Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Linguistic Show. I'm Carol. And this is Jason. And today we're talking about jobs. Should kids these days have jobs? Should they be a summer job? Put them by Mr. Work. Yeah, so, so we're giving our take on what we think, you know, is a, is a good fit. And so Jason and I both had jobs growing up, but at different um, stages in life. Um, so when did you start your first job when you were a kid slash teen? So are you talking about an actual job, a paying job, like yeah. an under the table job? I mean, it could be something as 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 so my common first as un, my first job, grass. my first actual job was an under the table job that I was working for my grandfather at age 14 at a cabinet makers uh, shop and so I literally just did all of the dirty work for 10 hours a day for like $20 <laughs> like that's how petty life was back then but yeah that's basically how, how it went and yeah that was my first job and then I uh, had a job at Safeway during high school. All throughout high school, I was either playing football or I was working at Safeway. Everybody knew who knew me in high school knew that. Uh, people used to hit me all the time like, why are you always working? You're never going to get to go out and do anything. I was like, yeah, well, you know, I got to make money. <laughs> Everybody didn't have the same circumstances I did growing up. I feel you. So like, was there ever a point when when you were, when you were a teenager that that you that you wanted to have a job or is it more that you were always told that you had to have one a little Which bit is of different. both i mean i mean i'm a very self-aware person and also just kind of aware of my surroundings so i knew if there were things that i wanted to have i would have to have a job because that was going to be the only way i was going to get it now um the flip side of that is is i'm just the type of person who doesn't mind a hard day's work um, you know, I must be a throwback to a bygone era, but, you know, I actually do believe in the value of actually working hard and, you know, getting something accomplished. And so, you know, like I said, maybe I'm a throwback, but yeah, like I always kind of knew I had to have a job. And then, you know, I've been through some things that kind of shape you mentally to the point where you're just scared to not have a job. I understand that. And for me, growing up um, as a teenager, my my very first job was was working at McDonald's, <coughs> and so I had to go and have a job interview, and I was nervous, and I was thinking at the interview for, for McDonald's, would they hire me? But I, had, I mean, I got hired, but I, I mean, it's I, McDonald's, though. Yeah, and so I figured that they, they hire anybody, <laughs> but I still had to go in and, and have an interview, and so it was after church, and I, I was actually in the, so I was, I was, I guess I was ninth grade technically, because it was a summer after eighth grade, um, but I hadn't started high school yet, and so I was working at, for those of you who may live in Waldorf, <laughs> my first job was at the 301 McDonald's in Pinefield, which is still there. It's been renovated since back in the 90s, but it is still around. And so, like, I'm like, when I was in middle school, I wanted to, to do things to help my dad out on whether it was like working at one of his job sites or that kind of thing, but I was not going to get paid. So, my options were either go help him out and don't get paid or not go. So, I chose to not go. <laughs> Cause like, cause right. I wanted, cause, smart decision. I wanted to get paid for what I was doing, um, but but like for me, there was a point that I actually wanted to have a job during 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 the school year, and so my my parents, but more so my dad, who was he was very adamant about my job at school, and and at that time I didn't you know, I resent him, but I wanted to to prove to him that I could, of course, go to school and have a job because 
lots of my friends were um, were doing both. They would and they would work part, they would work um, part time during during my school year, and then and then still go to school and still and still had um still had high grades. And so as a kid, I, I didn't quite get why why he was telling me that my job is school. I'm like, mm, school doesn't pay me, but I get what you're saying. And so as a parent, I can definitely understand where he was coming from. But I do think that, you know, that, that it is good for, for teens and young adults you know, who are still living at home to do both, to have a job and go to school. I mean, I ain't trying to pay for your gas money and lunch money and go out mo movie money every weekend, man. You better go get a job, shoot. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with these kids nowadays, man. They just used to everything being handed to them. But, yeah, man, you got to go out here and get a job. And then as someone who employs plenty of people, I can tell you that there is just definitely a culture gap as it pertains to work ethic like it's bad enough that barely any of these kids want to work but then they get to work and they don't know how to actually work they don't know how to do anything outside of themselves and that's really unfortunate it's kind of a um side effect of the whole social media generation I and mean, a lot of these youngers don't know how to do anything but chase clout like that's all they got that's all they got I do anything for clout like that's literally all they got do it so, for the gram that's, ow literally all they got so yeah like i mean i'm one of those people like i had to have a job when i was in in high school um i kicked in on the bills um everybody wasn't all in the same position that i was obviously but then also i had the special uh significant well not significant but uh circumstance rather of attending private school so you know when you get really really good grades and you're uh you know a multi-faceted minority and a multi-sport athlete, you know, they kind of want you to go to this school or that school or the, whatever the case may be. And so that was one thing that I knew I had to have a job in high school because so many of my classmates were filthy, stinking rich. And I didn't grow up in that environment at all. Like when I first got to high school, we were three years removed, four years removed from living in an apartment. We were living in our little duplex in Wheaton. And yeah, like I went to school with people who lived in mansions. And so like on a daily basis, you know, after a while you start to get teased about having the same sneakers that came out like two, three years ago. And, you know, like think about like this is like the the early mid nineties. So like being the one kid who didn't have a pair of Timberland boots back in the day, like just thinking about those type of things, I had to have a job because that was the only way I was going to even remotely be popular in high school and keep up with my uh, classmates and friends was like if I had to have a job to go get stuff straight up. And, you know, everybody doesn't have the same circumstance, like I said before, but um, one of the things that taught me at an early age was the value of stuff. Like, it's it's one thing to uh, say, ooh, I got some new sneakers or something. It's another thing to work, save up your money, get, the, get your money right, then go buy your own sneakers and it give you a different sense of pride than if your mommy or daddy went to the mall and bought it for you and swiped their credit card. You get a different sense of pride of actually earning it yourself. Um, that's similar to how I clown these new age sneaker heads who get mommy and daddy's credit card and go buy resold sneakers at like a 500% markup instead of just, you know, hunting for them like the rest of us and try to find a store who has them. You know, of course, that's a relic of a bygone era that doesn't yeah, exist anymore. Yeah, because I was going to be like, um, I remember the people who were staying in line overnight or for hours and just to get a pair or well, just to try to get a pair of shoes which which may not have always worked and so the, on a side note do stores even do those kinds of okay those kinds of lines or nah it's very few and far between waiting. it's usually only with like extremely limited releases where like a specific shop like a specific skate shop or a specific fashion boutique is getting x amount of pairs specifically only to them so like yeah that that is a it's from a bygone era and not and then to be honest all of these new age technological advancements to try to make it fair for that uh whole 
you know, sneaker purchasing situation, that's uh, been compromised as well. So yeah, it, long story short, that coupled with the fact that all of my old kicks are starting to fall apart, it's time for Jason to find a new hobby. Oh. Anyway, oh. tangent over. That makes me kind of sad. Captain Fly Kicks. Well, but I know, know it's part of life. At this point, it's the, the realization that, yo, like, I'm not finna pay 500% markup for a pair of sneakers. I'm not. I'm not finna do it. And then what's worse is that like, even, I've been a proponent of wear all your shit for years. Everybody who knows me knows that I am the wear all your shit person because I know your sneakers are gonna fall apart if you don't wear them. Your sneakers are gonna fall apart. And so, yeah, the sad thing is, is I am the president of the wear your shit club and my shit's still falling apart. So like, that's when you know it's just like, yeah, Brody, it's time to find a new hobby. Put, cue the sad music. I don't know which button to press because I might. Uh, I she might, gonna mess around and, I, and I cut the whole. The wrong sound effect. You gonna have some kind of Cinco de Mayo sound. <laughs> like, Hold on, next button. Hold on, next button. Oh it's, so let me not even do a sound effect right Tangent there. Tangent over. Yeah, so back to our regularly scheduled program, talking about you know, having jobs as go get a job, a, boo. As a teen. <laughs> So yeah, not only is it important, I think from an early age, like getting back to the point where I got on this tangent on the sneakers in the first place, be it sneakers or maybe you like a, you have a car, maybe you like clothes, maybe you want to buy all the video games, whatever the case may be. Maybe but, you're a woman, oh, it's a young girl that really likes purses. All right, well yeah, maybe you want to buy all the handbags. <laughs> all the accessories you can get your hands on the issue is is that it's important for you to know the value of that stuff and i don't mean how much it costs i mean the value and what are you talking about jason i'm talking about guns and butter we're talking about supply oh, and demand from, we're talking about supply school. and demand business <laughs> stuff come on man now you gotta keep up with it i start talking about business stuff and we're gonna be that's a whole three hour episode of me talking about the all that time. good stuff but uh, anyway, what I'm getting at is this, is the difference between how much something costs and how much it's worth. And it's very important, I believe, at an early age, and I've been trying to do this with our children, to not have them worry so much about how much stuff costs, mm -hmm. but to understand what it's worth. And so, for example, we were talking about sneakers. My oldest likes sneakers. She takes after her daddy. And so I made it a point the last time I bought her something really cool, a vintage pair of Air Jordan 1s, it wasn't about how much they cost. It was about letting her know that, you know, you have to have a job, you have to go to work to make money. And that's how you buy the things. So instead of thinking about things from a perspective, oh, that pair of sneakers cost $250, think about it from the fact that, okay, that pair of sneakers cost eight hours of labor. You feel me? Like, go to work, save your money, and now you're thinking about, oh, if I just go to work for three weeks and save up, I got a pair of sneakers. But instead of thinking about it from, uh, oh, this cost $200, so now I got to scramble to get $200, and then immediately after you get it, it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's not worth it to you anymore. Now you're right. chasing the next thing instead of you know valuing what the actual thing was worth. And so that was... I can say from my personal experience, that was what I learned early on having a job in high school was it wasn't necessarily about how much things cost. It was about knowing how much things were worth. It was about knowing that um, I could take my high school girlfriend out to a movie and, um, you know, we'd go to McDonald's or something and I could put gas in my car and I know I could get away with that with one day's worth of work. And so, like, that's the type of mentality that you have to kind of carry into an adulthood situation. You can't just start thinking money, 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 because money comes and goes. You got to kind of think about what stuff is worth as far as making investments and thinking about what is really, really valuable to you. And so from that perspective, I believe that it is important for kids to have jobs. Second part, and this is really the real important part. Now, you know, knowing the value of things is important the value of a dollar that's mm -hmm. what they say knowing the value of a dollar like does how much hard work does a dollar equal you know what i mean okay. that that whole thing but um specifically it's teaching accountability and responsibility um 
those two, along with availability, are the three abilities I look for as a hiring manager all the time. It's like, are you accountable? Are you available? <laughs> like, are you going to come to right. work when you're scheduled? Are you available? Are you accountable? Like, are like if you do something wrong, are you going to own up to it? If you do something right, are you going to say, hey, I did that. It was a great idea. Like, are you going to take responsibility? Are you responsible? Are you the type of person who is going to say, yeah, I did that. I'm responsible for that. I, You can rely on me to do these various things. I will get the job done. That's the type of stuff that I think are invaluable lessons that as an adult um, and again being someone who is a hiring manager by trade in my trade I do all of the hiring I do all of the training recruiting interviewing orientations that whole nine career development is my baby and one thing I can definitely tell you when you do recruitment when you're doing these pre-screenings when you're talking to different you know applicants and things like that especially the young ones you can tell within 30 seconds if they've ever had a job before not even looking at their resume like you can tell when you talk to them because some kids really have never had to put in any effort towards life before ever and some kids have had to grind from the moment they could think about it and ironically in my uh current place of business i have a i pride myself on having a very very diverse staff i have young folks i have old folks i have the whole alphabet community i have like frat bros like i got everybody that works for me and i can tell you wholeheartedly who are the real hard workers they're the ones who had to have jobs when they were kids they're the ones who are like 17 18 years old and will literally run through a brick wall for us Whereas like I got dudes who are like 23, 24 years old and grew up with a silver spoon and wouldn't know what hard work was if you wrote it on a piece of paper and handed it to them. They still wouldn't know. Hard work? What is What's that? that? What is that? Hard work? What is that? So like that's where I'm getting at as far as reliability, accountability, and availability. Because when it comes to your career in the future... Those are the type of things that people are really going to be looking for in those intangibles. Like you can have all the degrees you want. Um, you're not going to make it past the interview if you don't have intangibles, if you're not an adult, if you're not accountable, if you're not reliable. Like you won't get the job or if you do get the job, you won't last long. As a hiring manager, I'm here to tell you that I will hire you and fire you quickly i will not waste time and any real manager who's worth their salt won't waste time on someone who is wasting their time and so that being said yeah teach your kids early on to take their little summer job seriously and i'm not saying that you gotta go to mcdonald's and try to be roy Kroc, ray Kroc when you grow up like i'm not (laughs) saying you got to invent the next milkshake or whatever but at least while you're there, give it full effort. Try hard, work hard, like put some into it and trust and believe you feel better after the fact. You really do. And then secondarily, that's the type of thing that is infectious. That hard work is infectious. Once you start working hard, then you realize that other people around you want to work hard because they see you working hard and they want to be part of that. And it's just like it's just one of those type of things that from running a business, I can tell you um, It is important for us to teach our children the value of hard work and knowing that, you know, if whatever little dreams you got going on don't pan out, you can still survive Mm -hmm. because that's what a lot. That's what that's what's wrong with a lot of these kids nowadays. Is Is it that they don't have a backup plan? They don't not not even a backup plan. They don't even have a plan plan. They don't even have a plan plan. Their plan is to, I'm going to be famous. Well, how are you going to be famous? I'm going to be famous. Like, they don't have a plan. They're not putting yeah. in the work ethic to be great at any sport. We have They're talked not, about that before. Yeah, right. like that's, that, the house, yeah. right. that's crazy, right? Like, you got people who be out here like, yo, my plan in life is just to be pretty and famous. And it's like, what? Like, that's not a plan, yo. That's not a plan, Slim. It's not a plan. Because because beauty and looks fade and and I don't care how much Instagram or TikTok or, or whatever pays you, like that that may not pay your bills unless you're like one of the ones who like really, really, really stands out and then maybe They on that ho is life. They on that well, ho is <laughs> they on that they on that ho is life hashtag. That's what I was alluding at because that that may lead to other 
things and you get money some other way whether you get money from a baller or whether you get put in someone's movie or because you're instagram famous but but yeah like it's just that's one not of the, gonna yeah, give you that, um that's not gonna give you any kind of level of actual satisfaction or anything you're gonna be empty your whole life empty empty because you didn't really do anything with your life and so so yeah like again like that's it is important i believe to teach your kids the value of hard work teach them what work ethic means like i'm not saying they got to be uh akeem at mcdowell's and uh, <laughs> immediately move to the fries like they don't have to be like that but. okay I, okay i gotta interject because when i started let me put my church finger down uh, <laughs> nobody can see your daggone finger girl come on man eventually <laughs> man no nah, we're not ready for video i'm in here with some hoop shorts and a 10 year old dry fit shirt that like i'm finna matter. go like i'm finna go work out you got I mean, on I got you got on, on a blanket a sweater a shirt a tank top and slippers like you can't make up your mind is you hot or cold it's we can't cold make in up a basement you know that Lord well, have mercy. Me, it's cold in our studio hey. in the basement but but back to what you were saying like dang take on church finger okay oh. so back to the whole fries and mcdonald's so i got hired on a spot I'm at the church one day, so I was thinking, I must be the bomb because they hired me right away. They were easy questions, but turns out they pretty much hired them, almost anyone as long as you could answer questions decently and look like you were accountable, available, and responsible. So, I started on bathroom duty, and I was so disappointed because I gave a good interview and I was cheerful and all that stuff. My parents gave me rock because I couldn't drive because I'm only because 14 or, or, or I'm 15 years old. But I had to start on the start in the bathroom, and so I was you no know, a good bathroom cleaner. But then when I got moved to the line, as they call it, when it was fry duty and I could make those burgers, I was like, yes, my summer, I came up. Oh, I'm getting so excited. <laughs> the real question is, did you get on that drive-thru? Because drive-thru is like upper echelon uh, fast food, isn't it? Drive-thru is so fast-paced. Yeah, so, that's the dopest part. And so so I, I had drive-thru. It, it wasn't at that McDonald's, but it was when I got, mo when I, um, got moved to the quote-unquote rock and roll McDonald's. So for those of you who live... The rock and roll McDonald's. That's how, they had three... On the same highway in Waldorf, so you had to you had to have a way of, of, of distinguishing which one is which. So for those of you who live or shop or go through Waldorf, like you, you clearly know which one is the rock and roll thing. But anyway, so at that one, I was on drive through, and it was okay. But people would be asking for like extra sauce, asking for a phone number, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna try to give you your order the second window. That was McDonald's taking, I guess, like a little, little detour when you were talking about how uh, about some other uh, people who um who you either hire or have a, have applied for jobs and where you work maybe don't have the um I guess the wherewithal to be like a hardworking employee. One of the things that my mom um taught me. Um, I, I was in high school and possibly in middle school as well, but, but definitely in high school was that I need to handle handle my own business. And so I'm, I'm in high school thinking like, what does that really mean? And so like they, I'm saying they, my mom wanted me to be the person who was trying to get things solved for myself. So whether it was applying for a scholarship, was following up on a job. So like she would be there in the background as like moral support. That to me in high school seemed like a lot of pressure to have to be the one who was making your own phone calls about maybe a medical appointment or if there was an issue like with the store. Like going, I'm going and actually handling your business. But then... As a grown-up, you know, I realized that you know, that that really helped me to to get ready for the real world by being the one that had to make phone calls, had to do things to get my own matter squared away, and that's something that that I have taught um, our girls at at a young age, and will still uh, I'll continue to instill in them. But back to the jobs. Did you have any jobs maybe in high school or college that were maybe interesting or odd or just like, what? You did that? 
No, I had okay. all of the basic. Yeah, like, uh, you know, I don't know how the experience was for a young lady growing up in Charles County, but you know, we didn't even get hired for half the jobs we applied for around my way. Like it just, you know, we didn't really get. Was that because you're a interview. guy? Uh, uh, I don't young know. black high school boy. I guess, but opposed to a young black high school girl. Like for example, I applied for Foot Locker and Champs and all of those, mm. maybe a hundred times from the time I was in high school until the time I was an adult. And it was ironic that the first time I ever got hired in any of those kind of jobs, I got a manager job that I didn't even apply for. Yeah, I remember. So like that's what I'm saying is it's crazy the gatekeeping that some of these jobs actually do uh no i i mean the most interesting job that i had as a kid if you want to call it interesting was the summer between my freshman and sophomore year of college where um i was on a team of people who broke down and built dorm furniture like that's Are you telling me about that like job? that's not really very interesting but it's that was different. i mean I had that. It was just it was a campus job. It was something to do on campus. Um, you know, I had the Safeway job, courtesy clerk, you know, cleaning up everybody's messes, go getting all the carts, loading groceries in people's mm-hmm. car. You know, that could be fun. You know, every once in a while, somebody throw you a little cash for putting groceries in their car. Um, and then sometimes it's not fun because it's 100 degrees outside with 100% humidity and you got to be out there in a polo shirt and a damn apron. It's hot, bro. Or maybe it's pouring down and raining. Oh, yeah, and you still got to go snow. get all them carts. Yeah, you still got to go get all them carts. Snow, don't matter. Go get all them carts. Yeah, no, it doesn't go matter. Go get all them yeah. carts. And then the worst, and, and just for, for all of you people, and I'm saying you people, when you go to the grocery store or Walmart or Target, Sam's, BJ's, Costco, whatever it is that you do when you purchase food. I'm going to tell you one time. Oh, I already please, know what you're going to say. Please, you please, please. so well. Please, please, <laughs> you please. You know what you're going to say. <laughs> Be careful with these jars of tomato sauce. Oh, oh that's what you're going to say? So you don't even know where I'm going with it. Oh, my bad. Be careful with these jars of tomato sauce. This is the hardest thing on the planet to clean is a broken jar of tomato sauce. I can imagine because it's all that red. It's the red everywhere and then it stains everything and then the glass. And then you're trying to mop it and then the mop just becomes spaghetti. And it's just... (sighs) Do not drop a glass jar of tomato sauce in the grocery store. And also, you better put your daggone carts back. If you don't put your cart back, I'm just going to look at you as less of a human. You're like somewhere between chimpanzee and orangutan if you don't put your cart back. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. You And you know what? You don't even got to put it back. Just secure it. Put it up on a curb or something. Secure the cart because there's too many cars in that parking lot that get hit by random carts because somebody wanted to be lazy. Even though they have the sign saying that they're not responsible. And the, my favorite, my favorite be that my favorite cart. be the person who it actually happens to them. Like, oh my gosh, the cart hit my car. Somebody should have put that cart away. And that's the same person last week that left their cart in the middle of the parking lot and didn't want to walk the seven steps to go put it away. These are the type of things I used to see working at Safeway, just sitting there. Oh man. Man, another fun part about Safeway, when working you, there in the summer, <sighs> big giant boxes of watermelons, and you had to go through them in the morning and get rid of the nasty ones. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that. It had to be done at the store. You though. think they just show up with a pallet of watermelons, and they will all be good ones? Like, yes. nah, no, nah, that's not uh, how. I mean, somebody has somebody has to sort produce. it, but, yeah, I, didn't, but what, I didn't know it would be at the. Store. Yeah, that's how produce works. It's like they get it, they get all the food off the truck, and then that. after they get all the food off the truck, then we gotta go through and see what made it, what was still healthy coming right. off the truck. And then the thing with the watermelons is they would have them big pallets with like a cardboard box stapled to the pallet full of watermelons, and them jumps would sit outside for like three weeks. And so like that's what I'm saying is we had to go through them and periodically dig out the nasty ones. Uh-uh. Because they, you know, once one go bad, you're going to have the whole batch go bad. So you got to get them nasty ones out of there. So that was fun. When Um, you were talking about about like what what not to do at the grocery store, I just thought that you were going to say about 
about not having your foods together. So like having having like your cold items together, uh, having your because you No, saw yes, I am that. one of them. I am one of those people I, that I've I, learned. And so I, that's actually has more to do with bagging the groceries. Yeah. And so um, as part of this courtesy clerk job, there's multi facets to it. It's multifaceted. There's multiple there, facets to it. Um First of all, yes, you are the person who is cleaning up whatever spill. Spill on aisle 12. You got to okay, go get it. Okay, on the way. You got to go get Oof, it, right? On the you got to go get it. Um, you're also the person who helps the cashier bag the groceries. You know, if the line's getting crazy, you sit back there and you help them bag the groceries. You know, that whole deal. So what I learned while bagging groceries is how to be much, much more efficient. Like, they actually teach you now. Granted, it wasn't like I was paying super attention because I was 16. Like, I didn't care right. that much. I wasn't trying to be the greatest Safeway courtesy clerk of all time. No. Some, I just wanted a little bit of money. I, just wanted, little, that, I just wanted to have a little cash and pay my little piece of my car note. You know what I mean? That's all I wanted to do. But uh, one thing I learned for sure is that, yeah, you do have to kind of be careful of how you place things in the bag to maximize the amount of stuff you can get in these bags. Not only that, but yeah, like Carol pointed out, dog, don't be in here with like your jars of sauce and stuff, then a gallon of milk, and then boxes of cereal, and then two bags of chips, a loaf of bread, then a carton of eggs, and then three gallons of iced tea, and then six cans of beans. Right. It's like, dog, all that stuff's together. getting smashed. All of that's getting smashed together. Try to, when you're shopping... Put all that stuff together so that when you actually do get up to the register, you don't look like Boo Boo the Fool and then the cashier's looking at you like, bro, do you want your eggs to be flat or you want them to be intact? I can say because of your time working at Safeway in which you had <coughs> taught me early on in our marriage, I am the most awesome laid on the conveyor belt customer that stores may ever see because I learned from my JB to put my stuff together and, and with that you telling me that I I highly doubt that I would be that kind of customer but um, you had mentioned campus jobs um, a few minutes ago and, and so you, I think your campus job it was um, it was over the summer it was building I'm um, building dorm furniture but like one of well I had a few campus jobs I want to say one do you recall one of my mini campus jobs? Because I had like four or five or it wasn't even three. I feel like you used to work at like the dining hall. You were one of like the dining hall people, right? No? No. I swear you was like a dining hall cashier. Like the people who uh would swipe people's meal cards. I know what you're talking about, but no. Okay. So I, I did work. I, I guess it was with up at the food services but but it wasn't in the dining hall so i was i was um i was the overnight shift up for the convenience store um on north campus of you know of our college and so the daytime and the evening shifts were already full by by actual adults who needed jobs or by um students who were a bit older that that already had their i guess tenure and, se and seniority so i was stuck with the overnight shift at the convenience store and so for those of you who went to the university of maryland i'm pretty sure that that this store is still there so if y'all know where the north campus store is that's where i had to go man i what? bet you that job been torn down like why would they have torn university down of a maryland, convenience store university it was of maryland right is the, so new school and bougie but baby now. this this convenience store it had a name i, I forgot what it was called right like <laughs> turp time or some goofy stuff <laughs> like that. it's turp time it probably had turp in the name i don't know right. but you know, but but but, 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 but the store it was right in the complex of the north campus building so it was always going to be it was always going to be a busy store plus it was 24 7 Man, yeah, that it, job not there it, no more. And if it is, okay, I well, guarantee it's ran by Aramark or one of these companies. Next time we're in the area, I'm going to yeah. try to remember to oh, fix my eyebrows. <laughs> next time we're in the area, I'm going to try to remember to go and park my car and, and then walk in the complex of the buildings and, of the dorms and see if that store is still there. <coughs> because they had a store on South Campus, but it wasn't 24 7. 
One of the most boring jobs that I had in college was, was being a library security guard. Because I mean, I had applied for this job because I did have to have a um a, a job during college, and I, I forgot like what the actual program was called, but I basically it was like this the student work program. I forgot the actual name, but you had to um had to work with uh, I guess it was the office of student work, work study. Thank you. That's what it's called, work study. It's been a long time since college, and I, I forgot what it was called. Okay, so then they had a work study office. It wasn't called that, but you would have—I don't remember what it was called. But you, probably campus career services I, or some, some foolishness like, who knows like what it was that. Called, something but like, like that. if you were a student who was in the work study program, you had to then coordinate with the um the people that worked in this office. And they would um, help you find an opening for certain campus jobs. So that's how I got hired in my first job as a freshman in the Office of Multi-Ethnic Student Education, mm. a.k.a. OMSI. So, so if you're a black terrapin or minority terrapin, like, like you already know about the OMSI, like you know about Nemburu. So like that's, that, was my, that was my very first job, working for the... Office of Multi-Ethnic Student Education, but with that experience helped me to just to see more about how how diverse um, um, our college was. And like another job that I did have in in the food services was okay. So yes, I so I was a cashier at the gym. Okay, so it wasn't a dining hall, but but it was at the the. The gym, I guess, the gym cafe where you can get your smoothies or your healthy snacks after you had worked out or before. And so that's where I learned how to make smoothies because I had never had a smoothie until college. And I know that you like to joke about my lack of, um, lack of culinary experiences, but I never had a smoothie until I was at the University of Maryland because I had to make them for customers. And I was like, let me just try one of these things. And so I was like, milk base or juice base, we have options. So I still use those things for our kids now. Things I learned from my college job, Jason. Right. And I do the same thing, which is why anytime we have one of these self checkout situations, y'all oh, better just get out of my way, Mo. Just get it. out of my way, Mo. And then the and then what's crazy, it'd be like the employees of Giant and Safeway be watching me self checkout. Because and I'd be I'm like, I'd be like Slim, man, just watch out, Mo. Oh, do you need help bagging? Nah, I got this ball. I got, I got, he's got this. It. I got this, He's man. the leave, self checkout leave, man. I'd be like, leave me be, dog. I got this. For real. Leave me be. And then my last job, that was it. Okay, so it was the the convenience store, library security guard, the gym cafe. Oh, and then working um, for the office of multi-ethnic student education. So those were my four campus jobs that I had to do. How much it, it time? Wasn't, it wasn't in that order, though. How much time? Did these four campus jobs? What was the period of time that you had four campus jobs? Well, it jobs? wasn't at one time, clearly. Carol, Carol. it was. How much time passed during these four campus jobs? They were during the school year, so like once a semester, or you're looking at me like I should know. I don't understand. <laughs> So while you had while you were out here experimenting with your various campus jobs for two weeks here and two weeks there no, and quitting only, or getting no, fired had, or whatever I, the I case may be. I never got fired. I never got fired. Now the only one that I quit was the library security guard because it was so boring just just sitting there and saying, Is your book stamped? Show me your book. Show me your book. I mean I had a stool, but still I had to sit right beside the door and it would be cold at times and I don't want to <laughs> so I lasted for two weeks and I was the most I guess long lasting employee these jobs usually lasted um for one semester um for the OMSI office that was I think for the whole school year yes that was my um that was that was my whole freshman year um working at that office is that what you're asking me
During your whole time frame where you had four different jobs, uh -huh. I was an assistant manager at a famous footwear and a full-time student. So, like, like there's just different levels to oh, this. There's different saying. levels to this. Like, some kids had to have jobs to survive. They had to pay rent. So, like, it's, it's, it's a little bit different when you're talking about college kids versus, like, high schoolers. But, yeah, so, like, these are the type of things that do... Uh, do make it really important to expose your kids to having a job. So let's just say you guys might be, you know, maybe you're a little well off and you don't, your kids don't need to have any money. Or maybe you just don't want them to have to worry about thinking about adult things at such a young age. I don't age. want them to think about adult things at a, at a young age. Yeah, I'm but guess my what? Hand. But guess what? You know what else you can have them do? They can volunteer. Oh, definitely. Let's see they can in. be coaches. They can be referees. Like my oldest wants to be a soccer referee for Pee Wee Soccer. I think the stress will kill her, but I think it'll. What? Why do you think that? Because that of who our oldest daughter is, the stress of having to make decisions on the fly. Oh, I, she's I hear gonna what be you're like, saying. She's gonna be on the field like I don't know who's foul. I don't know what they do. It's a foul, but I don't know. Ah, they're ball. <laughs> so so yes, no, she'll probably she, she be frazzled. In it like her no, mom. she'll she'll actually probably be cutthroat. Angry yeah, and have yes. The kids, them kids. She were like. Back up. Them kids will be saying. out here. Them kids will be out here fighting. Like it'll be Hunger Games for real. Them kids will be out here fighting on the field. If Aaliyah is the tech on referee, there's no fouls. Blood is the only foul. Oh, so, her, so her yellow cards. Right. It should be carding people. I couldn't wait. So yes, like there's other opportunities. They can volunteer. They can volunteer at like a soup kitchen. Uh, they can volunteer. At, they're just anywhere in the neighborhood. So, yo, you don't even have to officially be like, I'm volunteering at so-and-so to volunteer. Y'all can just go and clean up some stuff in your neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times it's not even about necessarily getting paid. It's really about teaching kids the value of work and how important it is to be responsible for something. And so that's why... I think it's important. And so, yeah, they don't have to get job jobs. To be fair, my kids don't have to have job jobs if they don't want to have job jobs until they're adults. But when you're an adult, you better have a job job because I'm not supporting no adults. I'm sorry. I already got one to support. I'm not supporting no more. Okay. Now, if... I got, a, I, I, got say a, if, but I got an adult sitting when, right across from me that I have to pay for stuff for. Like I'm not, when they're in school, I'm like, not doing no, it with in, an in adult. college. Okay, so if if, if if they're in college or law school or graduate school or art school, whatever you know, school is going to be. Some you know, sometimes they're going to need money. You want them to be working when they're in college because some people have to do it by force, and some it's by choice. That's what I had to do. But we're n not the same as your parents and my parents as well. So that like, we can give them you know, the option of either wanting to work in school, and I say school as in after high school, or not not wanting to work. And they can find ways of still getting this kind of a of a work ethic without maybe having to I work. mean, are we talking about kids in high school or are we talking about adults? Because if you're talking what? about college kids, because that's a euphemism. They are yes, adults. They're, they're adults by age. They are yes, adults. They're adults by definition, but so that's but the only thing that matters. They're still a dependent, and so like if they're only a dependent for tax purposes. Like yeah, I gotta be I gotta be honest with you. I'm not saying we abandon our kids because culturally speaking, we do that too much. We abandon our kids and when they turn 18. Uh, I'm well aware, Carol. You don't have to repeat it for me. What I'm saying is that yo, <laughs> it wasn't. But yo, be responsible. Be responsible. Be responsible. Like nothing kills me more than oh, I need to go do this. Okay, well, go do it. Well, I can't go do it. Be nah, Slim. Be responsible. Be responsible. Like, you have no idea how many times I hear from some of my employees, and I can tell who's been raised to be responsible and who's been raised to be a victim. And it's just, it's sickening. The simple stuff 
that like people are willing to go ahead and lose their job for because they are unwilling to do something for themselves. Right. Like they have to have somebody do it for them or help them do it or they won't even get it accomplished. And it just baffles me how that goes. Like, oh, I feel you. I, I got to have, multiple employees to raised a certain way. I got multiple employees who would just as soon let themselves lose their jobs than do something that they had to go do for themselves. And it's just like, yo, like that just speaks volumes towards your parenting, you know what I'm saying, and the whole nine yards. But again, to your to your question, so if your your kids is in college and they in art school or whatever and they yeah, need money, then they gotta go get a job. Okay. Yeah, you well, can ask me for money. So you can ask me for money and nah, like let's be real, Carol, because that's how kids take advantage of their parents. I'm not saying that they Cuz she going to be she going to she going to sit here and be like, "But mommy, I need new watercolors or I won't be able <laughs> to turn in my project." So that, so and then, then 3 that, hours later be in Cabo St. Lucas with a bottle of tequila twerking. Like, so no, that, we're not going out like that. So then that's why in my opinion you would give these 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 adults who were in school because I guess you, you call it an allowance if you want to call it a set amount of money per semester, no to use as as they see fit, and so that's just my opinion. Like I think like the the majority of our listeners, if we're talking about kids having jobs, like we're thinking more about high schoolers. Well, yeah, maybe than, summer than college job. kids. Because again, I say this again, and I say it with no malice in my heart. F them kids. Like they're adults. Adults. They need to be responsible. Now I'm not saying I won't help them out, but I will not babysit them. Because there are too many kids out here right now who literally can't even figure out what they want for lunch because they've never had to make a decision for themselves in their entire lives. Oh, I agree with and you. And so I'm that's where I do, I do think it was great that your mom and dad forced you to do all your little scholarship calls and all of these type of things. Those things are important because I'm here to tell you, as again, as the hiring manager. I see people on a daily basis that can't make the decision to tie their shoes properly. Like they can't make decisions because their parents babysit them through every single occurrence in life. Yeah, that definitely will, so, will hinder them like when they're when they're an adult. That's not going to work out. And so that is why from my perspective, I think it's important for kids to have jobs because you have to teach them how to be an adult. Like to be fair, this is something that should be taught in school, and we know for a fact that we're out here learning advanced trigonometry and geometry, mm -hmm. and we're learning about stuff like the Pythagorean. We're never going to learn need, need the Pythagorean theorem. We're never going to need that on an on a day to day basis. But guess what? We do need to learn how to do balance <laughs> a checkbook. Yes. But that's not something that's taught in school. So you you know it's it's no, it's not the curriculum that in school. And you learned, okay, so oh. you, Charles County must be and the one county <laughs> in the state of Maryland where they actually teach, like, life skills classes because generally all we had to learn was stupid Roy G. Biv and things like that <laughs> that we're never going to use in real life. It would have been so much more helpful to learn how to do my taxes. You know what I'm saying? Ironically, I had to do my taxes when I was in high school because that's how much I was working at Safeway. I was there like a mug. If it wasn't football season, right, I was at Safeway. I was I had a full time job, Slim. I was working from three to eleven every day. I was out there, and then on Saturday and Sundays doing that like seven a.m. shift. I was out there. I was getting it. So um, what I'm saying is yes. It is important for these kids to try to learn a level of responsibility. I'm not saying that they have to be the greatest fry cook the world has ever seen. I'm not saying that they got to run these Six Flags rides more efficiently than anybody's ever ran a Six Flags ride. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is teach them that they got to get up and go do something. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't get up and go do something, ain't nobody going to do it for them. And that is really what this is all about that's a great way to end us out baby well that's what i do okay i'm saying that's way over here that's just what i do yeah that's for a studio audience who's not even here because we don't have an audience <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Now there's your audience right there. It's them on the wall at the cookout. That's enough. That's enough of that. That's enough okay, of that. They I'll can't. Make, they can't see the picture. So I'll make sure yeah. this must cut they, out. They can't. They can't see the picture. So that, that's enough that we're not going to yeah. do that. But yes, again, that's the reason why because you know you teach them how important it is to actually get up and go do something with your life, and you can hear more by liking and subscribing the linguistic show or all your favorite little podcast platforms i don't know why they little podcast platforms that's just one of the condescending things that niggas say like i don't know why we do that on one of your little podcast platforms so there's anchor there's okay. spotify that's another one there's stitcher that one too you can also play our episodes on linguisticshow.com i just like the bell so you have four ways to find our podcast. Go back and play some old episodes. Tell your friends and your cousins. Go tell your friends about it. Hey, I guarantee if you just text me or email me, I just send you the joint if you want. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like you want to just come, man, you just want to come sit in here and listen to it off the laptop. We got that too, dog. Trust me, man. Like we got ways to hear this thing. So thanks again for tuning in. Thank you. In. Thank you. It's been a fantastic episode. Uh, on if you say so. And guess yeah, what? Hey, episode. man, got to go to work. I got to go get ready to go back to work. <laughs> hey, man, I got to get ready to go to work. Bye, everybody. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, and share to the Linguistic Show. show. This has been an Ashangali Enterprises production. Co-produced by Naomi. Music by Brassville.